squirrels, man. Squirrels. That's why we're all here, right? Something like that. Oh. All right. Let's do it. Wow. <clears throat> all right. Welcome back to the Nut House in frame this evening. Ashton Johnson. Hello. Welcome to the show, Ashton. Thank you. Um, Ashton here is a photographer local to Birmingham. Um, let's see, we met you at Root to Tell of all places. Is that place even open anymore? It's not. It is not no, it's no longer open. Like any good boutique restaurant, it has a year and a half run. Year and a half lifespan. Yep, it was a good one. It was, a, <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> it was an okay one. Then a lot of experience, a lot of right. growth. Brought a lot of us together, you know. Yeah, no and now we, now, we, now we, we just remember. Just remember, never forget. Never forget. Never Root forget. to Tell. Anyways. Maybe forget. I mean, we're all friends because of it, it's okay. Yeah, that's that's about the best part that's come out of it. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's start by you explaining what a photographer is, does, what it all entails. So just a really brief description. I think that you can kind of take that in like different, you know, kind of realms, it depends. You know, you got so many people that can be a photographer now, um, you know, I, I, look at it more or less you can either look at it and like this person is a photographer because they use it as their profession they use it as their way to make money they use it as a way to support themselves um or you can look at it as a recreational thing i think honestly that definition is anybody that you know you know feels something from a photo you know, label yourself a photographer. Everybody can be a photographer. You get your phone. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to have a camera. It's really just how you convey that story, I think. And that's kind of what makes a photograph. In my head, at least. Maybe that definition changes in three years when, <laughs> you know, I'm a ripe page of 26 or something. I don't know. Ripe. 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 Um, okay. So, <clears throat> anybody can be a photographer? I think so. Okay. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. So what um, inspired you to become a photographer? Did you have a moment? Was it just something that's been calling to you your whole 20-something <laughs> life? <laughs> no, I think it was more or less like it was always, I was always around it, but I never really, I, I never really just kind of put my finger on it until probably six years passed. And then like, I was like, oh, wait a second. I've been doing this all of us all along. And uh, it was my brother, he like got this, not Nikon N60 back in like the early 2000s. It was mm -hmm. like this standard film camera and uh, we played around with it. And then we had these little digital cameras that were four megapixels at the time and had big clunky SD cards that you threw in there and had a battery life of 30 minutes. And then uh, played with those and I'd make videos on like YouTube with my friends and gaming videos and Minecraft videos and all sorts of stupid stuff. And then I think when I started going to like concerts and started kind of hanging around, uh, probably out a little later into high school, I would go out into the town and kind of like, I don't know, just see things and kind of get inspired by it all. And then I bought myself this standard Nikon at the time. It was like 2012, a D5200 and started playing around with that and messing around with it. And you know, one thing led to another and kind of, dive straight into it a little longer. longer. That'll run at it now, I guess, almost six, eight years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of that professionally, some of that just messing around as a kid, but awesome times regardless. Learning process. It is, yeah. Gotta start somewhere to yeah, get you somewhere. For sure. Okay, um, <clears throat> so do you actually tell a story with your photographs? Is it more of just like, you see something beautiful and wanna capture it? Or is it all of the above? It's it's different, I think, almost for every in, instance that you're in. So like, I'm sure like a lot of photographers, whatever that definition is again for you, <laughs> but I always carry a camera around me. It's always one in my truck. I've got my, my truck camera I carry around. I've got my nice camera at the house. I've got, you know, in whatever Your instance. Phone camera. There's always, there's always a camera and that's not just unique to me or you. I mean, it's everybody. Everybody's got a camera right. on them at some rate. So. You can tell a story with the worst photo, quote unquote, from a professional standpoint on how it looks and how it's exposed and all this and that. Or you can, you know, really capture something incredible on something very nice. But I mean, it, the story just kind of depicts when and what moment you're in, I think. Mm -hmm. So 
I'd like to think I'd tell a story with some of my photos. Um, I kind of like to think of photography as a, as a medium between using, you know, say you're at something at an event, because generally I, I go shoot uh, like concerts and music festivals and stuff of that nature. That's kind of where I found where I kind of feel the most comfortable with photography. And I like to think of it as a, as a medium between the person experiencing that between the people on stage as well. And then, you know, cut back and to the next day and you see these photos kind of emerge and it, they tell a story of some sort. And, you know, that can be different for even of an event that's very like by the definition or obviously at something incredible or just even a simple photo of like your grandma. And you look back at it two years later and you're like, wow, that tale's a great story. You can remember every emotion. You can remember everyone's feelings that you were around, even if they aren't photographed, just in that picture. Mm -hmm. And that's different for everybody. But that's like the beautiful part of it to me, I think. I don't know. It's where, it's where my head, that's where my head goes. The art is in capturing memories, no matter how you do it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that, you know, those, those things can get captured, like I just said previously, is like, whether or not it's a, a beautiful photo or if it's not, just the capturing of that moment mm -hmm. is, I, I think, what makes photography tell stories of some nature. So do you feel like, well, okay, first of all, before I go off on that tangent. Um, so concert photography and or videoing sounds like one of the more difficult um, places to shoot. I mean, it's chaotic. There are people everywhere. It's really <laughs> dark, typically. Yeah. Strobe lights happening. So how do you weave your way around those challenges? I mean, is that... Is that inaccurate to say that that's no, a really hard not, place to that's shoot? No, it's not. That's not inaccurate at all. I would say it's it's one of the more difficult places to shoot. You've got to be kind of on your toes. You've got to kind of be immersed in the situation. You have to be very aware of what you're doing at all times. One, because it's not a simple photograph at the golden hour of some, you know, something pretty on the beach. Mm -hmm. Like it just, that just is always gonna happen. It's, you gotta really make something happen at a concert. And that is half the reason I enjoyed it so much is because when I first got into it, I probably went to like 35 concerts as a photographer and massively failed. <laughs> just, just awful. I mean, I have a bank of everything I've ever done on my computer and there's a about a folder worth of 35 to 50 things that I've never even touched. Don't even look at them because they're garbage. <laughs> and you have to be very aware in those situations. It, it's all very, in that moment, like got to capture it at the right time. And uh, yeah, and, and one part of it that I think is so interesting is that it, it depends on, you go to different venues, you go to different sites, you go to different you know places where these people play these awesome shows and uh, you have to kind of adapt as you move. It's one part of festivals that I really like because you can either be at this massive main stage in the middle of an open field with sunlight, or you can be in the woods at night with some psychedelic art moving around and having to kind of adapt to that. So it's an interesting balance between the two. But yes, it is, it's difficult. But once you get the hang of it, just like anything, I think you kind of uh, figure out how to make it happen. So you're due to it because of the challenge? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. Also, I mean, I enjoy music a whole bunch and that's kind Just of- combining those loves. <laughs> it was, yeah. I'm not, I'm not a very like, I guess the words chill person. I can't sit and watch a show. I can't sit down on the TV, uh, watch TV on the couch. I can't sit in a crowd and just like watch the show. I can. I would much rather be doing something. I kind of found myself when I was going to shows early, like staring at stagehands and staring at like, you know, light lighting fixtures and how they moved. And I'm sure that comes from like a theater tech background that I did in high school. And I just always felt like I wanted to be doing something else mm -hmm. other than, you know, slamming beers and, you know, having a good time, which no, no I hate that, no I hate that. But, uh, I, I was think gonna say that's my favorite part of concerts. That is, that's a great part of concerts. But at some rate, I was like, I would much rather be like doing something and uh, being involved in it. It really, it really it made me appreciate the concerts more that I was attending, and uh, mm -hmm. I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. Okay. Um, so, do you have? It seems like you know, in your your what photography is. Um, there's not much of a difference between. Professional, 
professional photography and like a photo outtake. So to you, it's all just kind of art and the same. Is there a difference in having your picture professionally taken by someone that has studied and done it forever and say me coming up and saying, hey, let me take a picture? In a sense, yes. There's there's people, there's a, there is an elite, and I'm sure people can relate if anyone's kind of in that photography world. There is this like, somewhat elitist photography crowd that will be very upfront with you and say, you are not a photographer. There's no chance you are. You don't know anything about, you know, whatever aperture, ISO, f-stop triangles, or, you know, white balance and these situations and this, that, and the other. But at the end of the day, I, I think if, you know, you throw that iPhone on portrait mode and you take a really nice photo of your best friend at the park or something, like that's a photograph that they can use and like, Label yourself what you want. I think that's kind of what every human does at the end of the day. I don't really know who gets to decide that definition of you're a photographer, you're a runner, you're a teacher. You know, we're all right. kind of jack of all trades in some certain situations. Yes, there is people, there are people who are very professionally trained and they deserve to be notified as a photographer and they deserve that clout in mm -hmm. some manner. Um, but I don't think that there's always a clear line there, in my opinion. Okay. In my opinion. So humbly said. I mean, I just, you know, it's, it's, I, I had a lot of, a lot of people tell me, I mean, even today, and it's not like, oh, I got the haters or whatever, but it's like, people are always, there's, it's a, it's a dog eat dog world in some sense when you try to jump into something professionally. In any, in, in any field, in photography especially, because there are people who will be very quick to tell you that like, oh, that photo is garbage and that person does not know what they're doing and you shouldn't support them because they don't know what they're doing. But I just don't agree with that. There was plenty of people who took a chance knowing that this kid has no idea what they're doing. Like, no idea. And trust me, there's a million miles of me that is left to learn in that field, but it had, if you don't have people help you out along the way, then there's no sense that, that you got to kind of work between all that. And I think you have to have those people in any sense of any field, photography, teaching, running, like I just explained earlier, like in any sense. And that, that kind of, those kind of people can kind of help you lead the way a little bit. People that, that are willing to give you a chance, even though you don't have 25 years of experience that's behind you. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. You have to have a starting. Yeah. I've got a list of about three, four or five people that I can just definitely like 100% agree that like they helped me exponentially get across, you know, certain barriers of photography that I didn't know and whatever field of photography that is, whether it's concerts, or portraits or families or weddings. So did that come about just through experience? Absolutely. They gave you the chance, you got into it. Absolutely, and you yeah. Earned your way through it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you gotta, yeah. You once you kind of expose yourself to those situations, you you as a human adapt to them and you mm -hmm. learn at them. And then, you know, if you want to continue learning in that certain kind of field of it, then you kind of just continue to do it and just build the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> you have such just a, a flowy, artistic, like this is what I do, but you know what? You can also do it. So my next question is, Honestly, I mean, there are a ton of people that, you know, want to be photographers and maybe don't feel like they are because they have that person in their face saying, you know, you, you can't do it. Your pictures aren't good enough. So do you have anything that you would say to them? Any kind of advice? Uh, um, yeah, just don't listen to those people. Take a chance and keep going. No, yeah, just don't listen to those type of people. That's just negative energy. And, and you know, people can equate it to like, you know, those people are just insecure about their things. And I think that's true to some sense. I mean, people who are innately just out there trying to hate on people and trying to be like, this person ain't gonna make it, this person isn't great enough, like you should just look at my work and this, that, and the other. I think there is a friendly competition to that, but at some rate it's like, dude, chill out. Like you're just kind of an asshole. We're all just enjoying life here. Yeah, we're all just having a good time <laughs> and you're just kind of being a hater and that's just yeah. not fun. So. I mean, no, to those people, I would say just, you know, put the blinders on, keep your head straight, do what you do, keep your style, adapt people's style, have influences, and just keep going at it. That's what art's all about, right? Having your own style and not being afraid to to do that. It is, and not being afraid to, like I said earlier, 
absolutely botch it. Like, mm-hmm. be in complete garbage Have performance. Have that whole file of pictures that oh, you yeah. won't ever look yeah, at. Yeah, just a big yeah. old trash can file that you yeah. keep around just as a little inspiration to say, hey, look, this is how far I've came. That's the one reason I love photography so much is that you can see your own progress because of we're in the social media age of where we post things. And most ph- photographers and most photos hit social media. And then you're able to see that progress. So, you know... I get my timeline and it says, hey, look what you did three years ago. And I'm like, oh my God. I did that. <laughs> that was awful. That was just terrible. And then, you know. But you only say that because of how far you've come. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But at the time I was so excited about it. Right. And that is, that's an awesome thing to kind of realize about yourself as you, you can realize that you're, you're growing a little bit in whatever profession that might be. Okay. So is there any type of photo that you actually avoid or don't enjoy? don't enjoy taking? Or- I used to. I used to. Until until last year. And that was weddings. Oh, yeah. I had a very bad taste of weddings in my mouth. I didn't like it. I didn't, I, I worked in service industry jobs for so long where it was, I felt like I was working on these receptions as a, you know, a guy that puts chicken fingers back on the buffet for the wedding. <laughs> but um, I saw, and you know, I had, was doing photography and I saw the photos that would be taken at weddings and it felt like very staged party Mm -hmm. like hey look at how great of a time i'm having like this is the photographer just kind of felt like they were in charge and they led the entire wedding and it felt like everything was just because of a photo the cake cutting the first dance Mm -hmm. the this the that whatever and then i got invited to shoot a very good friend's wedding which at first i was like "Eh, do i want to do that and then i did it and i was a good friend and then and then i did it and i was like that was an amazing feeling to be in charge of capturing someone's most important day of their entire life. Mm-hmm. And they are very humble people. They're kind of hippies. So it wasn't very like stage shots or anything. It was just kind of like they they kind of let it with, hey, just go with it. Just do what you want to do. You know what you're doing. Just go with the flow. And it felt like all the pressure that you would feel from a wedding had just mm-hmm. had been gone. And then you get to, you know, they look over those photos for the next whatever years of their life. And to this day, she still hits me up. She goes, oh, my God, I just still love this so much. I just got to tell you. And it just feels very, very good. So all I've done is friends weddings for now. And uh, it's fun. It's it's, it's becoming this thing that I find very fun to do. And it's very humbling. Whereas two years ago, I was like, don't ever, don't even attempt to tell me about taking photos at a wedding. So I mean... Sounds like a wonderful experience. And if you are, you know, taking pictures for a wedding, as you said, for for the memory's sake, you know, yeah. it's a beautiful experience. It really is. It truthfully is. I and think they should all be that way. Yeah, they are. All weddings. They should be. Just... Unfortunately, statistics are not always on our side with that. It's not, not always how it works. That's why you gotta, yeah, gotta be careful out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, that's, you know, about all the questions that I have for you. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, I mean, you know, go get them, kids. That's all I got to say. Just go get them. Don't give up on your dreams. You really don't. You don't have to give up on your dreams. You know, I'm not a, like I, I'm not some professional photographer that, and seeing earlier I'm talking about how I'm not a professional, but I'm not, (laughs) I'm not this guy that walks around and that's not what I lead with. I've never led with that. I might need to, maybe if I want to try to, you know, keep the ball rolling a little bit, but I, I work at a bagel shop and I take photos on the side and I have a really good time doing both and I just continue to you know work on the craft as it kind of comes and yeah. I think that you can apply that in any sense of any skill set and I think that that will really help you out in life but I'm 23 so you what know. do you know I'm just some dumb kid <laughs> I'm a millennial so it'd be oh, it'd be like that a millennial I know I'm pretty sure I'm a millennial it kind of depends. It just depends what range you're in. I don't play Fortnite, so I'm Good really I'm really bad at it. So that's the only reason I don't play it. But uh, I can knock that one off my millennial checklist. <sighs> that's such a long checklist. <laughs> I've tried to play once. It was really bad. So it's hard. I it's a hard do. game. Yeah. I do. Know, I need to know some people to dance. So I'm not gonna. I would that. ask. No. Thank you. No, I'm not gonna. Okay. I'm glad I didn't have to answer no. that. My ten-year-old shows me all the time. It's okay. <sighs> They're good at them. They're fantastic. <laughs> so good. It's ridiculous, honestly. Um, 
All right, well, I hope that what inspires you inspires others. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Um, in frame, Ashton Johnson, everyone. Thank you so much. It's Thank been a pleasure. Thank you so much. An experience. Such an experience. Yeah. We we'll see you next time. <laughs> There's your cue. <laughs>